Could we be on the brink of another global economic downturn similar to the one we witnessed in 2008? You're most likely wondering about the state of interest rates presently as well. In this video, I'll address 10 reasons why the real estate market will crash in 2024. We'll tackle various topics such as affordability, a new type of inventory known as ghost inventory, the ongoing Airbnb crisis, interest rates, and my views on the looming recession. Get ready to gain some insight. Number 1. Interest Rates Factors such as the cost of homes, interest rates, and the number of homes available for sale will shape housing affordability in the coming years. It's important to understand that housing markets don't abruptly collapse. Instead, they gradually deteriorate over a period of time. Many people overlook the fact that there's a regular economic rhythm characterized by periods of prosperity and decline, which repeats itself continuously. The real estate sector typically fluctuates in cycles of 7 to 10 years. The unfavorable market downturn began in 2008 and continued until 2015, marking a 7-year cycle. The rejuvenation period started in 2015, leading us out of what may be referred to as a real estate recession and continues to the present year, 2024. Experts suggest that the overall trend will continue to follow a cyclical pattern with periods of growth and decline. We've reached a peak in mortgage interest rates, the highest in 22 years. The forecast suggests that these rates will soon rise to 8%. The increase could potentially trigger a severe affordability crisis. One factor that can impact housing affordability is the cost of homes. As demand for homes increases, prices tend to rise, making it more difficult for potential buyers to afford a home. On the other hand, if there is an oversupply of homes in the market, prices may decrease and make home ownership more attainable. Interest rates also have a significant impact on housing affordability. When interest rates are low, it becomes easier for individuals to obtain loans and mortgages, making home ownership more feasible. However, when interest rates increase, the cost of borrowing also increases, making it more challenging for people to afford a home. Another factor affecting housing affordability is the number of homes available for sale. In areas with a limited supply of homes, prices tend to increase due to high demand. This can make purchasing a home difficult for individuals with lower incomes. When there's a surplus of homes on the market, prices may decrease, but this can also indicate an economic downturn. Please take two seconds to help me out and hit the like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video so far. Each like and subscribe helps support this channel and keeps us motivated to keep making you great content. Thank you. Now, back to what I was saying. Number 2. Inflation Currently, we're in a solid growth phase. At the end of 2022, we witnessed a price decline when interest rates began to rise. However, the prices have balanced out, with a possibly slight increase noted in 2024. Despite the highest interest rates in 22 years, stability is ensured, and this can be attributed to the scarce supply in the real estate market, which does not include new constructions. We'll delve into the reason behind this contrast between new construction and resale markets soon. Home prices, interest rates, and supply levels will synergistically shape the market's direction in the foreseeable future. Yet, this balance will inevitably be tipped as measures to curb inflation could potentially risk economic stability, resulting in the traditional business cycle taking its course. The real estate sector, in general, tends to be a bit sluggish in its reporting, often lagging by around one to two months. Let's examine the S&P Case-Shiller 20-City Composite Home Value Index. This updated monthly index monitors price fluctuations in residential real estate across 20 significant U.S. metropolitan areas. The unique aspect of this graph is that it is adjusted for inflation, so the impact of inflation is eliminated from the data. For instance, consider if a stock increased by around 23% in one year and inflation was at 3%. We can reasonably deduce that the true appreciation of the stock is approximately 20%. The Consumer Price Index is the standard measure of inflation in the United States. It tracks changes over time in consumer prices for goods goods and services, such as housing, food, and energy. It's calculated by taking a weighted average of prices for these items and comparing them to a base period. Adjusting data for inflation is important because it allows for more accurate comparisons over time. Without this adjustment, changes in the value of a currency can distort data and make it difficult to 
accurately track trends. Inflation also affects purchasing power, meaning how much a dollar can buy at different times. Real estate is a key component of the CPI, as housing costs are one of the largest expenses for most households. Therefore, tracking changes in residential property values is crucial for understanding the overall state of inflation. The adjusted chart allows us to see how much the value of residential properties has changed, rather than just the changes in price due to inflation. The 20 urban areas selected for this chart represent a diverse range of cities across the United States, from major metropolises like New York City and Los Angeles to smaller cities like Denver and Miami. These areas provide a comprehensive look at the overall housing market in the country. This chart enables individuals and businesses to make informed decisions about real estate investments and understand the potential impact of inflation on property values. In addition to tracking changes in residential property values, Values. This chart also indicates economic growth and stability. Rising property values often indicate a strong and growing economy, while declining property values can signify an economic downturn. This makes the adjusted chart a valuable tool for policymakers and analysts in monitoring the health of the housing market and the overall state of the economy. Number 3. Fed People are so engrossed in the story propagated by the Federal Reserve that they neglected to apply critical analysis. They're blinded by the carefully curated stories, failing to recognize the significant problems simmering just below the surface. This ignorance is perpetuated because of fear fear of alarming shareholders and investors, and an attempt to safeguard financial interests. The Federal Reserve is often portrayed as the hero of the economy, with its actions being hailed as necessary and beneficial for the country. However, this narrative overlooks the fact that the Federal Reserve is a private entity owned by member banks and not accountable to the government or the people. Many argue that the Federal Reserve's policies have contributed to economic instability and inequality. For example, the low interest rates set by the Federal Reserve have fueled a rise in asset prices, benefiting the wealthy while leaving the average American struggling to make ends meet. The Federal Reserve's quantitative easing programs have been criticized for disproportionately benefiting large corporations and Wall Street at the expense of small businesses and Main Street. This further perpetuates the cycle of economic inequality. Furthermore, the Federal Reserve's role in regulating and supervising banks has been questioned, as seen during the 2008 financial crisis, where inadequate oversight led to risky behavior and, ultimately, a global recession. Number 4. Credit Crisis We're facing two significant challenges, a crisis in credit and affordability. Additionally, the commercial real estate sector is feeling the heat, with numerous office spaces almost reaching their repayment deadlines and experiencing a surge in vacancies. As a result, we are on the brink of witnessing several credit incidents that may cascade, causing a domino effect in our economy. Identifying a singular issue in this complex situation isn't straightforward. It requires critical analysis, recognizing that this multifaceted problem needs addressing. As businesses struggle to stay afloat, many cannot meet their financial obligations, leading to a decline in revenue and profitability. This has caused a significant impact on the economy as a whole, with rising unemployment rates and decreasing consumer spending. The real estate market has also been severely affected by this crisis. With people working from home and companies downsizing their office spaces, there's been a sharp decline in demand for commercial real estate. This has resulted in a surplus of office spaces and decreased rent rental prices. Number 5. Housing Affordability We're facing a significant challenge in the United States regarding housing affordability. To put it into perspective, only about a quarter of houses currently on sale are financially feasible for average income earners. In a well-adjusted market, this figure ideally sits at around 50%, a statistic we haven't witnessed since 2006. Additionally, there's considerable concern over the skyrocketing credit card debt, which hit its peak in the second quarter of 2023, exceeding $1.13 trillion. This indicates that consumers are financially stretched to a degree we haven't seen before. In fact, this rising credit card debt is preventing roughly 20% of Americans from qualifying for loans due to their high debt-to-income ratio. As an example, in Boise, Idaho, one of the hottest residential markets in the U.S., we're dealing with a serious affordability crisis. Housing prices, credit card debt, and interest rates collectively contribute to this hardship. 
Therefore, experts foresee a necessary decrease in prices in the next 18 to 24 months. Number six, ghost inventory. We're seeing a remarkable surge in what's known as ghost inventory. This isn't the same as the shadow inventory you might be familiar with from the 2008 GFC analysis. Rather, ghost inventory refers to the swell of extra housing stock construction companies have been amassing over the past three years. It's now poised to saturate the market. This growth of surplus inventory, particularly of spec home stock, is not composed of homes in the $300,000 to $400,000 range. It's instead packed with properties priced at $500,000 and upwards. This is enhancing the existing challenge we face with housing affordability in our country. It's a worrying time for builders who have seen the cost of labor and materials surge over the last few years, leading to increased expenditure in building these spec homes. As these homes flood the market, property prices will only drop, especially given the high interest rates. You may not find any mentions of ghost inventory in surveys, data reports, or journals. We're witnessing it on the ground in real time, from Boise to Austin to Vegas to Nashville. The bottom line is the U.S. housing market is on the verge of being overwhelmed with costly spec home inventory. The inventory crunch we witnessed in 2023 is not likely to happen in 2024. We're anticipating a flux of new construction homes, not just resales, as those sellers enjoying lower mortgage rates aren't likely to exchange their 2.85 or 3.25 rates for a 7% rate anytime soon. This pattern seems to be repeating itself in the multifamily sector too. High-end homes and Class A properties built over the last three years are sitting unoccupied in various markets across the nation. Number seven, Airbnb bust. The much-hyped Airbnb boom has taken a drastic downturn, becoming a significant issue for many. The occupancy rate is hitting record lows and the equity of many individuals is declining. A group who had staked their future on this phenomenon by securing interest-only loans to purchase between seven to 10 properties now find themselves in a precarious situation. The repayment of these loans has become a stressor, primarily because refinancing, which they had assumed to be a given, is no longer viable. Consequently, they're facing a cash crunch and the grim reality that they're not generating the profits they had initially anticipated. These small-scale investors are now burdened with escalating debt and in a position where they can't sell their properties due to their depreciating value. Their income stream isn't as robust as they'd predicted, thus amplifying their financial woes. Inexperience often leads to underestimated costs, which are now starting to hit hard. Also, due to various programs launched in response to the pandemic, reporting severely overdue loans is anticipated to take longer than usual. Number eight, unemployment rates. Anticipated financial downturns and rising unemployment figures have already signaled growing concerns as job cuts are noticed across the various industries. This recession, along with concurrent unemployment, financial challenges, and huge credit card debts are all contributing to factors that could potentially ignite an unfavorable economic situation. This downturn is set to speed up the housing market's collapse by creating a scarcity of liquid assets, therefore triggering numerous negative credit situations. To summarize, considering affordability, property availability, interest rates, and upcoming delinquencies due to poor investment choices in the Airbnb market, it's evident that investors made faulty predictions on the income these properties would generate. All these factors are brewing subtly, steering towards an unavoidable housing market collapse. Number nine, decrease in consumer spending. In a slowing economy, consumer spending decreases, reducing demand for real estate. When people lose their jobs or fear losing their jobs, they're most likely to cut down on non-essential expenses, such as buying a new house or investing in property. This decreased demand for properties will decrease housing prices, making it difficult for homeowners to sell their properties at a desirable price. As a result, the housing market will experience a decline in activity, leading to an overall crash. Consumer spending has decreased by 0.4% in the first quarter of 2024 and is expected to continue declining. Reports indicate that people are more willing to save and hold on to their money during uncertain economic times. This behavior will further decrease consumer spending, causing a ripple effect on the real estate market. This is because people with less disposable income are less likely to invest in real estate. Number 10, dependence on foreign investment. 
In recent years, foreign investment has significantly influenced the real estate market boom. However, with the current geopolitical climate and the rise of protectionist policies, foreign investment in the U.S. real estate market will likely decrease. This could have a major impact on the housing market as it relies heavily on international investors' cash flow to keep prices stable. With fewer foreign buyers, demand could drop significantly, causing housing prices to plummet. The U.S. Treasury reports indicate that global investment in U.S. real estate has decreased by 22% in the first quarter of 2024. In 2021, foreign investments accounted for 8.2% of all real estate transactions in the U.S., and a decrease in this number could have significant consequences on the housing market. However, with the current state of international relationships, foreign investment in U.S. real estate will likely continue to decline. For all of these reasons, I believe the market will experience a severe collapse. Thanks for watching, and please make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed the video and leave a comment below.